Welcome everybody to Google Cloud Innovators and in Telecommunications. We're here at Digital Transformation World in Copenhagen, and I have with me a very special guest, Gabriele Di Piazza. Gabriele, could you introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Brian. Nice to see you again. Uh, hi, everyone. Gabriele, uh, I'm the uh, head of products, alliances, and architectures at Blue Planet, which is a division of Siena. <clears throat> and so I joined recently, uh, and you know, glad to be driving uh, all of all the products that Blue Planet takes to market. Well, so Blue Planet is is no stranger to the industry. It, it's it's kind of been born and bred here, Siena Blue Planet. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the problems you're solving for? Yes especially as we're here at DTW. Yeah, absolutely. So we are a, a, an OSS company, and I would say that the, uh, the center focus of Blue Planet is really end-to-end -end automation. Um, Blue Planet was also born uh, through uh, a set of acquisitions by Siena. We got into uh, you know, orchestration with one of the first multi-domain SDM players as well, evolved with our inventory portfolio, <clears throat> and then added assets in assurance, uh, path computation, analytics. And so we, uh, we brought our portfolio together. Uh, obviously, uh, some of the core problems are, you know, lowering, uh, uh, you know, OPEX and uh, uh, speeding up developments. Uh, I think OSS is one of the uh, uh, core uh, unresolved and unmodernized aspects in the telco industry yet. So there's a lot of movement. Yeah, I, 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 well, so as you get closer to the network, I think things have moved a little bit slower, but are we kind of at that time where we're seeing a speed up and more of a uh, evolution, if you will, to help gain those efficiencies? Yes, what's interesting about Blue Planet to me is uh, we are a multi-vendor company, so we work with any provider out there, and we're also a multi-domain company. So we work from uh, you know access, transport, core network, mobile, fixed, IP, uh, across the board. So we've seen uh, different evolutions and some of the aspects today, they, uh, some of the problems that we solve are not uh, uh, only one specific domain, but they actually uh, require knowledge and expertise uh, and end-to-end -end across domain, all the way from planning your network, deploying, operating, optimizing, and eventually monetizing the network, which is one of the key aspects today with uh, driving to network as a service or NAS. I feel like I'm back in the triple play zone when you have to have all that knowledge base, right? So we, we partnered together. Can you yeah. describe kind of what that, what we're doing from a partnership perspective yeah. and, and how do we kind of become better together? Yeah, so um, we made the decision um, some time back, I would say a year and a half back, that cloud is really the future and cloud native is the enabling technology that will allow us to drive our portfolio forward. Uh, so we uh, ported all of our uh, core products around inventory, network inventory, uh, network automation, orchestration, and assurance uh, uh, on a cloud native platform. As part of this, of course, there's a broader support of you know Kubernetes underlying infrastructure, and we had a, I mean strong partnership with Google because we actually run on GCP, especially on GKE, uh, uh, on the cloud native version, and now. Um, we are, of course, working with the teams to understand how we are already diving deeper into areas such as AI, analytics, data management, and so forth. And so the partnership is strong. We have different customers on, uh, on the platform already. Um, and again, glad to, uh, you know, getting the relationship stronger and growing. Well, I think, I mean, seeing anything running on Kubernetes, we kind of helped invent that, if you will, or did yeah. invent it. So we, we like to think we have that expertise that yeah. we can bring together and um, come together with those applications, yeah. creates a stronger environment for yeah. our customers. What kind of business results are you starting to see in the marketplace from any yeah. of those early deployments? Yeah. Uh, by the way, great you call out Kubernetes. When we launched our Clarity platform a couple of months ago, uh, uh, we actually wanted to have Google quoted in the press announcement because for us was, uh, I mean, the best example of uh, uh, the company who invented Kubernetes. So it was a great you know, reference 10. for us. Yes. Yeah, we <laughs> You're just right. celebrated. You're right. Kubernetes right. turns 10. Uh, the best results is, um, you know, to make it simple, uh, we have seen a, a vast amount of consolidation happening in the market, uh, taking our cost and speeding up processes. 
there are uh, situations right now where we are federating and combining multiple inventory systems as an example um, you know in excess of 10 in each customer you know in any uh, any day you walk into a carrier you would find you know hundreds of uh, operational support systems so we are just at the center of this transformation uh, orchestration automation is another area where there's been multiple siloed environments uh, we look at the process end to end and remember that um, we actually believe in the evolution towards a, you know autonomous networks so this will not be complete if you cannot uh, measure uh, and understand network conditions and feed it back into the automation process so a uh, uh, lot of consolidation taking our cost but in reality I actually see this evolving fast into uh, speeding up deployment, launching of your services, and leading to monetization opportunities. Well, uh, so becoming autonomous, creating that automation, getting that efficiency, looking at that layer of AI on top yeah. becomes critical to the industry, yeah. especially as our operational efficiency and revenues, it doesn't seem like those lines are crossing appropriately yeah. uh, with revenues skyrocketing. You know, it's not skyrocketing yeah. and operational costs increasing. So. Yeah. It's a really important space. Uh, if you have to look into what's happening now, two, three years from now, what does it look like in this space? Yeah, uh, I see. We'll see um, a huge drive of turning networks into uh, not just the uh, engine for uh, managing the current services, but open them up to monetization. This has been actually in a while, and, you know. Uh, we've been talking about different angles between APIs or network as a service. I see more and more openness. I actually see more and more standardization happen across the industry. Uh, we start to see operators getting together now in a more serious way in understanding how uh, some of the standards could be uh, worked across different, uh, not just different domains, but different carriers as well. So um, the future for us is AI-centric and cloud-centric. We made the decision on being cloud native first, um, over 75% of our implementations are based on, on cloud, uh, and we see that growing. Uh, it's interesting, people don't realize how uh, <laughs> this has already uh, been implemented. Uh, and AI is uh, a core to our products. We are a data rich environment, we collect data from the network, uh, we have information about configuration, models, and everything. Um, so we decided to actually build AI as part of the core of portfolio. We built something called AI Studio, which allows to uh, um, you know, generate a set of AI-driven use cases, uh, issue resolution, alarms prioritization, cross-layer um, automation and stitching, um, resource forecasting uh, and inventory, um, but at the same time, uh, we believe that AI is a you know, fast moving. So it's a system we allow uh, us to build use cases, but also allow customers to bring their own uh, data pipelines or their own expertise. So their own data scientists and PhDs, they can actually work and insert this intelligence into uh, our product. Uh, uh, therefore, um, eventually looking forward, we are trying to understand if there's a way of uh, even exchanging some of these applications across uh, across different carriers. I think it's uh, we've covered a lot of ground here, and being able to leverage AI to help an operations person, someone activating networks become a lot easier, expanding that out to the developers inside the operators to improve their jobs and positions is really fascinating as we drive more efficiency, not uh, you know across the network. So yeah. really looking forward to a continued partnership. And thank you so much for being here. Yeah, no, thank you. And that's it for now with Google Cloud Innovators in Telecommunications here at Digital Transformation World.